Hey folks, I am Ryan Goodman and you are listening to the Agriculture Proud Podcast. Join the conversation and find all my content at agricultureproud.com. Hello and welcome. This is episode seven of the Agriculture Proud Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Goodman, coming at you from Helena, Montana. And uh, it just happens to be Earth Day this week, so I hope you're tuning in to social media. I'm sharing several posts and uh, helping to farmers and ranchers talk about how they are being uh, conservationists and helping to be sustainable for our environment, helping to celebrate Earth Day. So you can tune on that. You can find me on social media, Twitter and Instagram at Ag Proud Ryan and Facebook, I am Agriculture Proud. And if you haven't already, be sure to go to my website, agricultureproud.com and click subscribe right up there at the top menu. And you'll get an update each Monday morning uh, for the new post, new podcast for the week. You don't want to miss that. Easy to do. I won't send you any spam. Just click subscribe right there, fill out the quick form and you're good to go. Well, today, like I said, Earth Day, and I've got a good interview that goes right along with this. I'm talking to, to a couple of gals from the World Wildlife Fund. You heard that right, the World Wildlife Fund. They've got the logo with the little panda. And usually we associate that with conservation wildlife species, endangered species, stuff like that. But did you know that they've got programs to work with ranchers? So uh, talking to Jesse Tufty and Nancy Lobby, they work with the Sustainable Ranching Initiative with WWF. And I'm going to ask them a little bit about why is World Wildlife Fund working with ranchers on sustainability initiatives? And what does sustainability mean to WWF? That's a question that is usually up in the air. How do we define that? Well, we get right down to it. And how is WWF and the Sustainable Ranching Initiative providing ranchers with tools so they can identify the ways that they are sustainable and to get that message out to people who are really caring about our environment? So I think we've got some really good... Uh, we got a really good discussion. I apologize for a little bit of the audio. Um, we got some traffic in the background, but I met them in Sheridan, Wyoming at a conference, and that was about the quietest place we could get. And it's we were doing good not to get a lot of wind. Um, but hey, that's what happens when you're working with ranchers and you get out and try to try to kiss some of these interviews. So apologize for that, but I think you can definitely enjoy part of our conversation. So stay tuned afterwards. We're going to share some resources and some bit more about how you can find out more information about World Wildlife Fund and what they're doing to work with sustainable ranchers. I hope you enjoy the interview and stay tuned afterwards. Today I'm here with a few folks from the World Wildlife Fund and Sustainable Ranching Initiative. We've got Nancy Lobby uh, and Jesse Tuft from the Sustainable Ranching Initiative. And uh, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and, and what is your uh, your background in the industry? So um, I'm Nancy and um, I've been working for World Wildlife Fund for about three years now. And I guess just over three years. Uh, I have a background in the beef industry. I came from working for about every natural meat producer out there, including Coleman Natural Foods and Meyer Natural mm -hmm. Angus. Um, I worked for a small processor in um, Colorado yeah. that processed yeah. bison for a while and also had a beef processing facility. Um, it was part of the Colorado Beef Council. So very in, engrossed in, in the meat side of things. And then also I have a ranching background. My family ranches in the sand hills of Nebraska and have done so for 110 years or better. So coming into WWF was a little bit of a um, different uh, yeah. piece of work. And I'd have to say probably the most challenging job I've ever held, but also the most rewarding, because I really feel like um, the work we're doing in the Sustainable Ranching Initiative will have an impact on ranchers and the beef industry in general. Yeah, definitely unique to come from the industry and then come into an initiative in a project like yeah, this. absolutely. What about you, Jesse? Yeah, so I have much less experience with the ranching <laughs> industry, but um, I went to Montana State University and studied economics in the College of Agriculture. Um, so I have that background, and I also did my master's degree in political science. So I definitely don't have a science or wildlife background, um, but I've been with the Northern Great Plains program here at WWF for about four years, and the past year of that has been with the Sustainable Ranching Initiative. Um, a lot of that was driven by my passion for what ranches are doing on the landscape and um, my ability to kind of like network with, with ranchers and kind of find common ground. So that's, it really <laughs> has only been about a year of experience in this industry, I guess, but um, 
definitely, you know, learning a lot from Nancy and learning a lot from the folks I've met along the way. And if you've got passion, you can do a lot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right? It's half the battle right there. It is. Jessie's done a great job over the past year, really just immersing herself in, in with the Montana stock growers and other cattlemen's organizations and really um, just getting uh, getting to know folks, and she's done a great job of doing that, so yeah. I'm really glad to have her. Yeah, and I met Jesse working with uh, the stock growers and environmental stewardship projects. We might might mention that here in a bit. Um, and so, first off, for a lot of people um, may not be very familiar with it, what is World Wildlife Fund? So World Wildlife Fund is a nonprofit global organization. Um, we have over five million members globally, um, about 1.4 million members here in the U.S. Um, people who, who give us money to do. Um, different projects. Uh, one of the main projects or programs that we have here in the U.S. is the Northern Great Plains program, which is um, encompasses part of Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, and the Sandhills of Nebraska, as well as two provinces in Canada. And it's um, 180 million acres of grassland. And the reason that that's grass is because we have ranchers. And um, so a few years ago, about four years ago, I guess now, um, because it was so so much of that grassland was owned by ranchers, about 80 percent. We put together an initiative called the Sustainable Ranching Initiative, where we d decided it would be a good idea for us to start working with ranchers to help them keep ranching. Because if they were ranching, then the grass was right side up. And one of the main threats to this grassland is encroachment of um, uh, crop agriculture. So a lot of grasslands being converted into into corn, soy, a bunch of other commodity crops. And so our goal with ranchers is to try to help prevent that. They need grass. We want grass. That's our common ground. And so we put together this initiative to work, to work yeah. with them. Yeah, when people think of, of WWF, you think wildlife and conservation and not necessarily ranching. So when I first learned about the project, I thought, well, that's, that's a unique spin on it. Um, how have ranchers, how have ranchers taken to the projects when you've been started working with them and and working on some of these these sustainability projects? I think initially, um, we've spent the last three years, uh, pro probably most of the last three years, doing a lot of listening and not very much talking. We talk a lot about what it is, that, you know, that, what our goals are in keeping grass and grass. But honestly, it, it, we've done a lot of listening with ranchers, and the reason we've done that is just because it was a different environment for ranchers to, to be involved with environmental groups. I mean, it was it was a little scary. I mean, it, we got a lot of really odd looks, but I think over the past three years, we have um, just proven that we're not out to we're not out to tell people how to ranch. We're not out to, to tell people what to do. What we really like to find out is, is what keeps them up at night and is there a place for WWF to help keep their ranch viable because if their ranch is viable they have grass and that's what we need for the species that we care about. And I think WWF has a very human centered approach and so they really gave us the space to make sure we do listen to the ranching community and kind of develop our you know future and develop our direction informed by livelihoods and I think that's kind of unique in a way that WWF really prioritizes making sure that humans are going to thrive in whatever you know we're working toward and so listening has really built a lot of trust and I know that you know I've been with the project a little bit less than Nancy has but throughout the past year I've been approached constantly at all the rancher meetings that I've been at um, by people who have heard about our project and they want to share, they want to come to me with their perspectives, and I think that's because our reputation at this point is that we are building a program that works for ranchers, so ranchers are open to working with us. So in all this listening, um, what have you learned that sustainable ranchers have in common? What are some of those things that are making ranches sustainable today? innovation and you know the desire to improve and um, the desire to communicate with today's consumer which is a lot different I mean it's definitely you know consumers today want to know about sustainability they want to know kind of where their food comes from increasingly and so 
the ranchers who who want to access consumers with that story, I think, are you know going to be more sustainable moving forward, um, just in their operation because you know you consumers care and you know how it is, especially in the beef industry. Um, the media is quick to pounce on beef production as a environmental degradation, but really, consumers need to learn about. You know, beef starts on the ranch, and the ranch is doing a huge service um, by keeping this ecosystem intact for all kinds of reasons, water quality, um, carbon sequestration, you know, open space, habitat, all of that. And so the ranchers can tell that story. And I think one of the things that we really heard loud and clear in, you know, in kind of the countryside as we were out listening to folks is, you know, there was there were some really big main themes that kind of emerged. Mm-hmm. One is the whole idea of communication, and that's kind of one of the things where we feel like maybe is a place for us to play a role is to be able to talk about the great things that ranchers are doing, and to be able to communicate that these grasslands are here because of ranchers. They need to be grazed. 200 years ago, it was done by bison and other large ungulates. Today, it's done by cattle in the same way. Same manner. So there, there is a reason to have beef production on these lands in the Northern Great Plains. We also heard about the regulatory environment and, and this whole idea of passing the ranch down to the next generation it has some really big challenges. And we're, we're trying to figure out where we fit in those spaces, but um, you know, in, in devising our strategy going forward, we're really taking what we're hearing from the ranches really trying to devise a strategy. And our strategy at this point is kind of you know in those broad categories of you know, maintaining ranching as a resilient livelihood through, you know, all kinds of different programs that we'll develop over the years. Um, and then kind of the marketplace piece, which involves some of Nancy's work with the, the roundtables, as well as just communicating with consumers um, and trying to kind of elevate that conversation about beef so that it's more sophisticated and it appreciates what ranchers are doing here in the Northern Great Plains. And then a third aspect of it is kind of, you know, science and metrics, which is something that WWF can bring to the table, really understanding how the landscape is changing and understanding that ranchers are, you know, keeping so much of the system intact as well as, you know, doing grassland bird surveys and these types of, you know, wildlife specific things. So you're, you're talking about it, you know, I, I view the Sustainable Ranching Initiative as it's, it's, a, it's a different perspective coming to the table in a lot of these collaborations. And so, Jesse, for you, someone that doesn't have a long history in a ranching business, what's uh, maybe what's what's something most exciting thing that you've learned from ranchers over the last couple years? The most exciting thing I've learned from ranchers. Um, for me, it's been really fun. It's kind of rare, but I love kind of meeting some of the younger ranchers that go to the you know stock growers meetings or you know the children of some of the ranchers that we work with who, you know, are excited to keep ranching into the future and it'll, you know, maybe look a little different, but just the amount of learning that goes through each generation and passion, like you were talking about in the beginning. Um, I, I get a lot of inspiration from the people that are out there just because I don't think anyone views it specifically as just a job. It is a passion and it's um, ranchers see so much incredible you know, so many incredible things that we will never even know, you know, when we go to the supermarket and buy beef, we don't necessarily know um, all that comes along with that, and I think ranchers have a really special, you know, place in America when they're... Special message. Yeah. Yeah, as as someone that's been in the industry and been on ranches all of my life, I'm envious of people who get to come into the industry and come in with a fresh light and and experience things in a different way that I won't ever have the opportunity to. Yeah. So that's, well, that's my family cool. comes from a farming background, both sides of my family, so I'm definitely comfortable in rural environments, but uh, I am a little jealous of, of the ranch kids because <laughs> I just, you know, native range and just being out there, it's it's just really amazing. So I'm thankful to the ranchers who have welcomed me out to their place and, you know, taught me about about the industry because it's pretty amazing. Bruce Schweitzer, he always talks about, um, you know, the fact that he gets to wake up every day and look out his window and see things that people only look at in in wild America, you know, and he gets to see it every day and it's Mm -hmm. part of his livelihood and he's just so grateful for the fact that he gets to 
to be a part of that and to be able to pass that down to his children. It's just and to a have that in his care, care, you know, to yeah. be the steward. Of yeah, it just that it much, so. gives you gives me goosebumps yeah. thinking about you know the fact that that, that he's so passionate. And there's so many yeah. more that are just like that. Yeah, should yeah, definitely there. be thankful of what we have mm -hmm. don't always realize so um, for, for you Nancy in, in some of this project what's uh, you know thinking about some of the most exciting things that have happened or aha moments that have kind of happened you mentioned uh, counting birds is that right yeah so um, the last couple of years we've embarked on a um, bird survey project and we have um, a bird guru on staff who um, kind of heads, heads that up. I only say guru because I can never remember the science-y word for what his title is. But anyway, he's a bird expert. And he, and feel free to edit that out. He, um, uh, he could, he knows more about birds in, you know, than I could ever know. So we've kind of embarked on this idea of looking at private lands and one of the, the very non-scary things when you're talking about ranchers, when you, especially, when you, especially when you're talking about a species, you know, we work on a lot of different species. We work on bison, we work on black-footed ferrets. Those are not overly friendly species for ranchers. And we understand that, so we have a place where we can go to, to work on those species. But for birds who, for grassland birds in particular, they're in steep, steep decline, and birds are not scary to ranchers. And so... One of the ways that we thought we could help provide um, maybe some science as well as, as a way for us to be able to get into conversations with ranchers is to do some bird surveys. And so two years ago we started in Montana, and um, the first year we begged, borrowed, and stole to get six ranchers to, sign I think up. it was six, to yeah. sign up. Um, and, and it was, you know, we, we had to be very careful with the people who were doing the bird surveys. We were, you know shut the gate when you get there and you, you know, make sure you do all we just wanted it to go just so perfect because we really wanted to be able to continue this in other states um, it was very successful the bird surveys the surveyors went out and they counted birds basically at a certain plot um, that went into a report that we gave back to the rancher on you know, this is what we found and this is the, you know, the, the importance of it and some background information about it the next year in Montana, we had more ranchers that wanted to do it than we had funding for. So it was, it was just one of those things that people found out we weren't, we weren't that scary. It was just birds, and so they thought, yeah, it was okay with Joe down the street, so I think we'll do it. We'll try to do it this year on our ranch. And so it was highly successful. We also expanded into South Dakota and to, into Nebraska, um, just kind of seeing the, the reactions of some of the of the ranchers about what they found and, and the, the sense of pride, you know, oh my gosh, I have that bird on my place. I never knew that I had, you know, a little brown bird, we call them, because they all have names and, you know, we never know what they are, but they all are, are important. And the fact that they have them on their property gave them a sense of pride. And, and so we hope to continue that going forward and, and, and even, you know, expanding it to, to find out you know, what are the management styles that allow those birds to be there so we can help other folks give them the science to be able to explain why why things are there and why they're not there. Yeah, and something like a small bird is something that may not have paid a whole lot of attention to or its purpose for being there or why right. it's there. So, and, and to kind of bring it back around, you're talking about here giving ranchers the tools and mm -hmm. Absolutely. help them to do other things rather than when we're talking sustainability or conservation, telling them they have to do it this way. Yeah, and it, you know, it's sustainability is not a one size fits all, and it's and it's not a production practice. It's it's a it's a process, and and we just want you know, thing, times are changing, and we understand ranches have been in the same families for a hundred years, our, our family included. But you know, the ne we want them to be in business for the next hundred years that is going to be different than the last hundred years, and so how can we help help them? give them the tools to be able to make decisions to keep them in business for the next hundred years. Oh, for sure. And, and speaking of hundred-year-old ranches, 
and some ranches that have been around for quite a while. Um, Jesse, I mentioned when I first met you, we were working on the Environmental Stewardship Award, mm -hmm. and one of the ranch was that we, that we honored last year was the American Fork Ranch. Um, what's it been like to work on that? Uh, help, help to World Wildlife Fund and Ranch Sustainable Ranching Initiative help to, to support that program and help those ranchers who are doing great stewardship um, work to get their message out. What, yeah. What was that like to work with them? Well, that was one of the first things that I did in this role, actually, was um, to work with you guys at Montana St Well, not you anymore because you've <laughs> moved on. Boo-hoo. So but <laughs> uh, with the Montana Stock Growers, um, to provide some additional funding, in addition to our support of the ESA program, um, we also provided some additional funding in Montana for outreach specifically associated with the award. And that was last year, as you mentioned, and it's great to meet the Evgene family who won the award and went on to um, win at the regional level as well. But what what the additional outreach money has done is to just you know help and you know increase the profile a little bit of the award, kind of bring some more recognition to it, um, and encourage you know the winners to be able to reach consumer groups um, and reach out to other people in the community to encourage more applicants for the award. Um, I know that. Ranchers, you know, I've only been around them for <laughs> around about a year, but they're not they're not always one to boast or, you know, brag to the neighbors about what they're doing so well. But I think stewardship is one way to really access consumers and tell, you know, tell a more complete picture of, of beef production and help to kind of champion stewardship, not just at the state level, but um, at the national level as well. So that outreach is one of the ways that WWF has really made a good connection with the Montana stock growers and helped to kind of fill a dual role of sustainability outreach and, um, you know, connecting with ranchers in our state. So, so in supporting uh, financial-wise in that outreach project, yeah. is that, so that's just one of the ways that, that you're helping and supporting ranchers and getting this message out? What are some other ways that you might be doing that? We actually use that same model and, you know, would look to, like to do to do some more of that work with other cattlemen's organizations in other states, the same that Jesse had mentioned that we did in Montana with some of the, the funding there. And we're also, you know, we're not out to recreate the wheel. You know, cattlemen's groups are doing great things. There's some, some small rancher-led organizations. There's grassland coalitions. There's a whole slew of organizations out there that are doing really great things. And so for us, it's about supporting those organizations and not creating another one to do the same exact thing. So how can we just help them be more successful? So we've um, provided some capacity building grants to a few organizations that, you know, we can... Rancher-led yeah, groups. Yeah, these are rancher-led groups, yeah, absolutely, that, you know, really are, are out promoting good stewardship and are doing great things. Um, we have, we are very aligned on, on our goals and just being able to allow them to do more things going forward. Well, that's that's pretty cool and look forward to seeing the name of the project out there quite a bit more. I think we could sit here all day and <laughs> got some great oh, stories. Yeah. <laughs> and it's well, it's great to see that we're so, you know, it's it's a subject that we can all be very passionate about and yeah. collaborating um, on efforts moving yeah. forward. So, um, and, and just kind of the last word, where can people find out more information about WWF's uh, Sustainable Ranching Initiative and where can we find you online? Yeah, so you can visit our website, which isn't packed with details, but it's www.worldwildlife, or sorry, worldwildlife.org yes. slash ranching. Yes. Um, there's a little bit of info on there. You can also email ranching at www.wfus.org. That goes right to me, but I can kind of coordinate for our team, and um, we love getting inquiries from ranchers. We love, you know, meeting new folks. Um, we've got a quarterly newsletter that comes out now that people have responded really well to, so we'd love to have more folks on that list. Um, yeah. So reach out anytime. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Nancy. Thank yeah. you, Jesse, for yeah. joining me on the podcast. Yeah. Appreciate thank you, it. Right. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed that conversation. Jesse Tufty and Nancy Lobby from the World Wildlife Fund working with the Sustainable Ranching Initiative. Um, and Maybe it's something that you haven't heard of before, or maybe it's something that you have, but you haven't looked much into it. I encourage you to go to their website, 
worldwildlife.org slash ranching and look into it a little bit more. Look at some of the programs that they've got going on. And in the show notes uh, for this episode, I've got a video embedded uh, where they have a conversation with one of the ranchers that they've worked with here in Montana. And you hear a little bit more from Nancy about the program. So be sure to go and, and find that on my website in the show notes for this episode. Um, you know, it's really encouraging to see work like this being done from conservation groups. Uh, we hear a lot of negativity coming from consumers uh, accusing farmers and ranchers of not being sustainable, of not caring for the environment, of not conserving our resources. And so when you see something like this come along, you really want to make sure that it gets a lot of energy and exposure that it deserves um, so we can get that message out there. And I encourage you to uh, to look a little more into it. Like Nancy and Jesse said, you know, they're looking to do more work like this in other states, like they have supporting the Environmental Stewardship Award Program here in Montana. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you stay tuned. If you haven't already, go to my website and subscribe. Uh, that's agricultureproud.com. And you can catch all the future episodes and articles coming out of my stuff. So until next time, I'll see you online. And be sure to tell others why you are agriculture proud.